What's up dudes, Chooch out here on the b Gold EXN. And you're probably wondering, what are you doing right now, dude, with that hollow bearing? But anyways, I as soon as I got this wheel, before I ever went and rode it, I did a treatment to the bearing. And I was planning on putting Z-Max, you know, taking the bearings out, putting Z-Max in it. But I just got marine grease, and I'll show you the process to do it. I think anybody can do it. It just takes, it literally took me about an hour to do the entire thing, uh, start to finish, you know. Um, I just had to wait on the marine grease to come in from Amazon. You can go buy it really anywhere, but I just got an Amazon Prime, so it took me more than a day to do it. But I had other wheels to ride, so that's the beauty of it. So I was able to wait and then do it right and then be able to get out and ride it in some mud and everything without worrying about it, guys. And it's mud season up here in Colorado. So by mud season, um, what happens is you, you can see there gets to be a lot of snow on the mountains and everything like that. and Basically, during the springtime up here in the mountains, all that snow is going to be thawing out, and it just creates mud everywhere. So the dirt roads stay muddy for like three months. Everything's just covered in mud. And so I knew that going into it. And if I wouldn't have treated this bearing, I probably would have had problems uh, eventually. And this is a great wheel, and I don't want anybody that's, that's thinking about getting into the hobby, you know, that sees me doing a breakdown on the wheel before I'm even riding it, you know, as to be a, a discouragement, guys. Um, one thing you really got to learn with getting into this hobby is it's these wheels, are, they're really easy to work on, and it's important you get the tools and you get the stand, you get everything you need to really work on it. Uh, so when something does arise, you can take care of it, you know. And it's basically, guys, this is a big RC car. If you can work on a remote control car, you can work on an electric unicycle. And I'm not even kidding about that. You know, those little Traxxas RC cars can be ten times more of a pain in the butt to work on with the little components and everything. These are really simple to work on. Just take it apart one time. Next time you do it, you'll do it twice as fast. The thir third time, you can do it ten times faster, and you'll know how to do it, and then you can keep your What's equipment running good. I'm going to be breaking down my brand new uh, b Gold EXN. The reason I'm going to be doing this is I'm going to be taking apart, I'm going to be taking out the bearing, and I'm going to be treating it, and it's just because of where I ride it. I ride snow, mud, rain, all that all the time, and I think that's pretty much what you're going to need to do. So this is my little toolkit right here. Link in the description, guys, to get this, and um, I just put these little Nipix Cobras in here as well. So all in all, this is about a $50 little toolkit. It's kind of expensive once you throw these in there. There's some tire spoons in here, but this it fits these well. Uh, these are nice little pliers right here. I like these a lot. And then uh, this is pretty much all you need to take this unicycle apart. And just grab a uh, five millimeter hex bit. Use it slide right in here. You can take this out. See, this, uh, this tool literally will take apart this entire unicycle, guys. I'm going to do a specific video on this little tool. If I haven't done it already before, I make this video. And on this other side... And then, pretty much open this up. You're just going to go around this whole thing. Um, be, just be careful you don't strip these out. You know, just go easy with it. A long, skinny drive works the best for this. It's gonna be, when you take this thing apart right here, you're gonna have all the screws loose, okay? And then it's still gonna be like, okay, what's holding this thing on? And under here, the battery actually has adhesive on the back of it and it sticks in there, which keeps everything kind of in place. And um, you can re-stick it with your own adhesive or whatever you, you wanna do, but normally people just kind of leave it as is, you know? All right, there we go. That's how you take that off. So check it out, so this is, the inside of it. We're going to take this off now and get down to the, uh, hopefully I can uh, slide this out straight off the top like the other wheels. We can get down to the actual bearing. I just took all those screws off. Now I'm going in over here on this, on this side. So these screws that are right around here check this out right in here and I think we can get to the uh, motor cable and then go slide this off and then we can get to the actual bearings in here. So check this out in here guys. I want you to see what's going on with this. I think this is just a covering. 
So that's just your covering right here, guys, to your motor to get in here to where the bearing is. Yeah, so that just is just silicone in there like that. And this is all this cover is, guys. So that's the cover in there, the Bigot X. And you can see this new motor design. It's not going through your bolt. It's just going into your hollow motor right there. Let's just see how easy, how much easier this is to take apart. Now, now we got to get over here to this. So these are the little pliers I like to use to take off the uh, the motor wires. So all I need to do is just take off this. And he's been doing the, a lot of those disconnect things. three motor wires and the hall sensor just like all the other wheels. It's green, blue, and then yellow. That's the order it goes in. So from the battery side is green, blue, yellow. So just take a picture of that. So green, blue, yellow. And then we're gonna first of all we're gonna disconnect the uh, the battery. So disconnect the battery from the main board right here. And then what you're going to want to do is actually turn it on to drain it. So that dumps your capacitors completely, so you're not going to have a problem with anything. Nothing's going to get surged or popped or anything like that. And then get in here, and then you're going to have to um, undo the silicone on this one little connector right here. Be really careful with doing it. A um, X-Acto knife usually works the best. So let's do that. This exact knife right here. That hole sensor can kind of be a pain to get up. So just literally, you got to spend some time going around it and then slowly pull up on it with some pliers and then it'll come up. So yeah, just be very careful whenever you're moving these motor wires. I love these. Like I said, these tools were great for it. At an iconic London location. Here we go. So, green, blue, yellow is the order it goes in from the battery side. Green, blue, yellow. A little twist like that back and forth so you're not exerting force on the top of the motherboard and you're golden. So then all your wires are good to go. And we should be able to flip this thing up now and slide this straight off and have access to the bearings. And we're gonna treat our bearings. See and it's already starting to want to slide out. So I've literally just taken the side panels off, loosened up these screws, popped this little cover off right here, and then taken off the hall sensor and the motor wires, and that's it. And now, hopefully, this thing will come up right here. I think that's everything. Sweet. So that's without looking at any videos or anything. On it, and it's pretty simple to work on. There's just the only thing that's different in it is it's just another battery pack, man. Holy crap, that's a heavy, that's a lot of battery weight, dude. That's crazy. Like, it's a lot of battery weight, man. So you just have more uh, connectors running your batteries together. That's pretty much the only difference. That's a lot of battery weight. Holy crap. What? Now we're basically to the bearing part. This is where I was trying to get to. So now we need to get in here to where we can treat this and fill this up with marine grease. Show y'all exactly what you need to do to the bearings. And this is if you're riding in climates like I ride in where it's snowy, rainy, sn uh, you got salt on the road, everything like that, you know. If you're gonna be riding in just dry, arid climates with a little bit of splash, whatever, there's enough grease in the bearings standardly then you're not gonna have to do anything to it. So these wheels are really easy to break down with the new hollow motor design. This is the first one I've ever taken apart and it's really not bad at all, guys. Really, the, the breakdown process has been simplified due to the whole um, hollow motor design. And I think if you lubricate this thing really well, um, you're not gonna have a problem with it. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and fully waterproof a wheel. I've never done this before, but I'm gonna fully waterproof a wheel and we're gonna walk through all the steps to do it and do a simple little button up on this thing and get it ready to roll and I literally haven't even rode it yet but you know I was just patient with it we had this snowstorm and you know 
sometimes with wheels guys it's better to wait a little bit but you know and not rush into it make sure you get everything you need for it make sure you get all your gear make sure you got your helmet make sure you got a mud guard and make sure if you're gonna get one of the, the new hollow motor wheels I really really suggest guys putting some marine grease in it you can get a big tube of this marine grade grease right here for about five bucks shipped to your door on Amazon Prime and you don't need an injector you don't need anything like that you don't need to get one of the things for trailer grease or anything like that we can make it work you know it's all about making it work and it doesn't have to be perfect guys that's the beauty of it um, you can overdo it with the grease and it's not going to cause a problem with this thing you got so many watt hours behind you on these things and so much torque greasing this thing up it's not like putting too much grease in a skateboard bearing and having a slow wheel you know you got a lot of torque behind you to work with you here so let's get into it let's do this real quick I've already started a little bit so I'm going to show you all what I did so you see this is the, uh, the 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 bearing in here and I have really already packed it with this stuff so I did one side of it. I'm going to show you all how to do the other side of it as well but I'm this is just a start I show you you know and I got like basically like a little spoon right here and I'm just I'm gooping it in there guys you know don't be concern with getting too much in there really I'm going ham with it you know like you're probably gonna be like okay that's a little bit ridiculous but the whole point is guys this is not gonna ever rust this is this is gonna be in here this this grease is is made where it, it does not come out of like a trailer when it's rolling at high speeds you know and so you really it, if you have a, a syringe where you can inject it in in here in between all the ball bearings I say do that but another way you can do it is just do it like this you know it's gonna be messy and there's gonna be stuff everywhere but guess what there's not gonna be any rust anywhere so just roll it around in here you know if you want to get it all in here the best you possibly can work it work it all in there you see them and I just got it sitting on some styrofoam blocks right here. So I'm literally just going all around with it. You know, it's working down in there. Good. You know, use your use a little tool to, you know, get it all in between the, the ball bearings. Let it all work in there good. You know, it doesn't matter. If it gets on the outside, great. That part of the wheel is not going to rust. You know, so go around right there with that. Boom. And now we're going to take this and reinstall this. Just literally push it back on here like this. This is your bearing steel. And I'm going to use some tools to do this so I don't get everything totally covered and stuff. Which I probably will get it everywhere, but it's alright. So push this bearing in here, this bearing seal, down in here like this. And it's going to goop out, guys. It's going to goop out. That's fine. We can, we can wipe that off in a minute. We just want to get this bearing seal down here on 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 here like this. You can just work it around, just work it around, work it down, work it down. And I'll show you how to remove it on the other side. That's why I should have shown you that first. Removing it's pretty easy. You just get under it with a tool like this, and don't bend it. Don't just pull one side. You got to think of it. It's like um, something stuck to something that's like moist, you know, and it's gonna. You gotta kind of really get all the way under it and pop it off. You know, you can't really just pry one side because you'll just bend this seal right here. You know what I'm saying? So I used to do this. So where all this started at with tinkering with this was whenever when I got my hands on Heelys back in the day. You remember those? I used to take my bearings out of my Heelys. I strip all the lubrication out of those because that's a different type of bearing, really. Where you know that's just your your physical momentum. And I'd put them in a Gatorade bottle and get all the lube out of them with um, some rubbing alcohol and shake it up, shake it up, shake it up, shake it up. And then I'd put Bone Speed Cream in my Heelys, dude. And I had the fastest Heelys ever, bro. One, one go and I was going across on Home Depot. Easy. Just that that seal is pretty much in there now guys it's pretty much down in there good to go and then you can take a little paper towel and then wipe wipe all this excess off and i'm not even going to wipe it well because i literally want this this to be just it's just going to be more waterproof guys more water resistant you don't have to worry about this slinging on type of any engine components or anything like that really like you would in a in a different scenario or sling it up onto your boat if it's you know a trailer grease or anything like that this whole motor hub right here is all well lubricated now. Really, you can wipe it on here if you want to. This is going to get dirty, but it's not going to rust. So, I'm literally going to I'm literally going to pack it all kind of on this, you know, on this, on the inside of this and everything. 
so there you go there you go rust free baby and I mean that will get dirty of course that will get dirty but it's not going to get rusty now you know and so that's one side sealed up right there guys boom so the way I get the bearing seal off of here guys is I get under one side of it like this and you're just gonna have to work around it you know it's not gonna come up all at once because you got to think there is lube lubrication already under here there's not much though you'll see how much there's not much at all under here so I gotta kind of pull up on one side and work your way around here there you go see that you don't want to really bend it too hard but it'll eventually pop once you get enough of it up you know where it, it'll just kind of pop right up no problem you know and then that you see this you can kind of pull that up you don't even need to take any pedal hangers off or anything that should just stay intact right there and you see there's not much grease at all in here guys you know there's uh i mean that's just and and it it's not probably an economical thing. They're just probably thinking you're not going to be riding this in the amount of moisture and stuff as we do. And even being so, it would take a lot of grease to do these big bearings on each one as liberally as I just did that. You know, to put as much grease as I just did in all those wheels would be pretty expensive, honestly. Uh, over time, it would be. Just t take some marine grease right here and just glob it, dude. And just pack it. You want to pack it down like this spatula type thing this like a syringe would literally be better if you had a syringe a little syringe to get in here but i don't have one where you could just squirt it all in there in between those ball bearings it would work way better than what i'm doing but this still will work better than nothing you know so see i ride and so much rain and snow and everything, guys. Like, this is why I'm really going ham with it, you know? Because it's going to keep turning. There's enough force behind this thing to keep my little, little butt moving no matter how much grease I put in this, you know? So, we're good on that fact. Let's go all around this baby in here. Pack it all in there good. And I'm not, I'm not really hitting the bearings hard with this tool, guys. I'm just... I'm just using this to rake, rake over the ball bearings and rake, rake this stuff into the ball bearings. All right, take this right here, slide this over, pop her into place. There we go, baby. So that bearing, that seal is pretty much on there. It's not going anywhere, sealed around there. Now you can wipe her down, and I'm gonna do the thing where I just spread this around a little bit, honestly, because it's just gonna waterproof everything, guys. Grease is not a bad thing sometimes. Yes, it will get dirty, but it will not rust. It will not rust. All right, she's ready for water, baby. And I know it's not perfect. You're probably like, okay, yeah, dude, Chooch is an idiot. You know, he can't put grease on anything. He's probably like, all right, he's being lazy with it. But I just like, this is this is waterproof, guys. There's not water getting into this. Like, this shit, this is this is waterproof. It is now that's done. I got some clear silicone in this gun right here, and we're gonna take this bad boy, and we're gonna completely seal this thing up. Oh. All right, now I'm gonna go around yonder right here. Oh, hey, hey, hey there. 
So this is experimental, but what we're gonna do here is go all the way around the motor because this is the only other access point where water could really get in here. And we're just gonna seal it. So the only time you ever need to get into this motor is when bad news happens anyway. So it's already gonna be a pain in the butt. So seal this thing up. So we'll goop it around here. We'll just do the old finger finger check around the around this to. Come on now. There you go. Now that's a waterproof a goat right there, boy. You ever waterproof your goat before? No, I ain't never waterproof my goat. You should try waterproofing your bago, man. I heard if you don't waterproof that bago, water's gonna get in it. That ain't pretty, but it's waterproof. Shit. I dare water I, I dare water to get up in my rig, boy. I dare it. I dare you to get up in my rig, boy. I dare you to get up in my rig, boy. Probably don't need quite as much as I used last time. It's that direct inject angle you gotta go at kind of different than caulking. We're going for that direct inject angle. Uh, yeah. What? A little bit of extra in there. Uh, yeah. Wipe this baby down. Wipe me down. Wipe me down. Dude, this is sealed, bro. That motor is like completely sealed. It really is completely sealed. And even around all the screws now. I've never done this. And I might be an idiot. I know I actually I am an idiot because now these can't open, over open. I gotta clean those out. Actually, worst comes to worst, I can always pick the silicone out of those bolts straight up, man. Like that's a bad day if you ever gotta open the motor on one of these. So that's the church Chooch motor waterproofing job right there. How did I not get any of it on? Now Cardi B can't even get my unicycle wet. How about that? Look at that. She's protected, guys. I got silicone on everything. It's it's gonna dry clear though, so it's fine, dude. We waterproof now. So, I'm going to feed these wires through here, grab them like here, you can, on the side window, yeah, that's actually really helpful, you can pull them up through the side right here, once it's already on there, if you got a, uh, a little stand like this, I got brain grease everywhere, but you can, so you see that, like, it's possible just to go ahead and slide the wheel on there, and then slide these wires through there like that. And it used to, you used to have to sit there and pull the side because you'd have to get the motor wire through this, through the side. So I'm, I'm liking the hollow motor for maintenance on it. You know, the hollow motor, if y'all wanted to see kind of what I was doing, sorry, this thing's so heavy to work with. I'm, I know the angle is bad, but basically what I did right there is on the side, you could see the motor wire sticking forward. So I stuck the screwdriver in there, got a hold of it, and then just pulled it literally while this is all the weight sitting down on this, Pull this through there. All right, so on the side right here, super simple. These are, these are your uh, motor wires right here. You know, you just want to plug these straight back into these three right here. So in here, uh, when you put your motor cables back on, it goes green, blue, yellow, right across there. And then I just take suppliers and just real easy, just kind of work these little covers back over it right here. You want these covers over here? These are these are protected against. Um, Thermal protected against so if anything starts running away or anything like that on these wires, or if one wire gets hot, it's not going to affect anything on the other wire. And then the only other thing you take off is your hall sensor, which this plugs right in over here. That's it. And here with some silicone on it. We got to get on quickly. Heck yeah, dude. All right. 
when you reconnect your uh, battery right, so to you the battery when you motherboard that? cable, it's gonna go pop. So you give it a little that's pop, a good that's thing. Good. Don't get scared of it. I always save those like silica gel packs or whatever, and I had this big one laying around from something. It's like this like dry clay silica gel it's pack, good. whatever. But anyways, this is just an absorber, and this cover goes on right here. So this is the way this new thing works. It's coming out of the hollow motor right here, and this cover pops on right here, and basically all this is doing is this is acting like a, uh, a shield right here to keep water and everything out of here and also acting as a see this mesh right here so this is so this can breathe so the motherboard can still cool down so it's a pretty cool design and the way that you can actually probably ride this thing through, through a substantial bit of water and in worst case scenario the water is going to come up to this level and then it's going to drain out of there actually so it can literally drain out of this eventually but um, I'm going to put some, some silica gel packets in here just to be safe with it. Keep all this dry in here, you know, why not? So that's that. Okay, so that's still in there. That seal's in there. Boom. All right, now we got to button this thing back up, and really, I really like these new Begoes because they give you um, hex hardware instead of the old uh, Phillips head hardware. So, button this thing up, and we'll get it going. All right, guys, so I can report back. I've been riding this, you know, for about a week, and heavy water, rain, snow, mud, slush, grit, grime, salt, everything, and it has completely fine. It is rolling smooth.